Activated. Analyzing. Update complete. What's up, Lore Masters? Today's video is brought to you by a counselor of the lore. Consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash lore reloaded and joining the Council of the Lore tier. This will allow you to have your video request brought to the top of the list. Now with that out of the way, let's just get into it. Today we'll be analyzing an episode that specifically examines the Omega Directive. And we're going to be looking at the episode itself that was featured on Voyager called... Erm... Um, well, the Omega Directive. At least they were forward with the naming conventions there, eh? For this video, I'm going to be discussing and taking a look at Janeway's actions and her interpretation of the Directive. Now, I will be doing a complete breakdown of the Directive itself and how the Borg treat it as a religion at a later point. But let's just get into the episode. It begins with the ship detecting an Omega molecule, and due to this, the Intrepid-class ship stops all propulsion and all of the bridge controls are locked out. Because that's safe. Man, I sure hope that no all-powerful mechanical species with the ability to assimilate people ever learns that you can trick a Starfleet ship into thinking an Omega molecule is near and thus causing the ship to instantly shut down, especially in the middle of combat. Thankfully, this would never happen. But back to the episode itself, the crew is fast at work trying to unlock the bridge consoles when Janeway shows up. She deactivates the lockout and tells everyone everything is okay. She sequesters herself in her ready room and begins researching the sensor logs to determine what is going on. For those who are uninitiated, the directive requires that she does this by herself and tells absolutely no one. Well, generally she wouldn't be able to talk to anyone, but there is one person who already knows about the Omega Molecule and so she's not breaking any rules by talking to her. See, this person would be a former member of an all-powerful mechanical species with the ability to assimilate people and thus would have learned about this weakness of Starfleet ships a long, long time ago. Oh wait, son of a Janeway's overall mission is to destroy the Omega Molecule and hopefully be able to do it easily with Seven of Nine's help. Generally, it would be a specialized team that handles this problem, but due to the ship being in the Delta Quadrant, well, here we are. Now, it is important to note that Seven of Nine would have other thoughts. She wouldn't want to destroy the Molecule, but that's something that we're going to discuss in another video, as I've already kind of went over. So the two would begin devising a plan on how to destroy the Molecule. So, I bet you guys are asking, why all of the secrecy and concern? Well, the Omega Molecule is one of the most dangerous, game-ending Molecules in existence, apparently. If handled incorrectly, and the Molecule explodes, it will throw particles everywhere which will rip into subspace. This will prevent the use of both warp technology and possibly subspace communications within the radius of the explosion. Unfortunately, this result was found out too late for researchers within Starfleet when an accident occurred and a large swath of Federation space was not able to now be traversed using warp technology. The Omega Directive itself rescinds all other orders, including the Prime Directive, and it orders that the Molecule be destroyed or handled at all costs. Meaning that the lives of entire civilizations are not as important as the ability for the Federation and other governments to use warp. And I'll be honest, at first, I scoffed at this notion. So Starfleet can't use warp technology, and they're willing to let people die or kill to keep that from happening. Doesn't sound very Starfleet. But then, I broke down the consequences of no warp. I really thought about it. And you know what? It makes sense. The United Federation of Planets is vast and they are all interconnected and rely on trade through warp technology. The removal of the ability to utilize warp and possibly subspace communication, an innumerable amount of people could die from this. So, the directive itself makes sense, and Janeway removing the molecule at all costs? That seems justified. Back to the episode, both Seven and Janeway look deeper in how they can destroy the molecule, only to discover that it isn't one molecule they're dealing with, but hundreds. There is no way Janeway can do this with just her and Seven. If she wants to succeed, she is going to have to use the resources of Voyager. This causes some issues as she tries to figure out how to do it without letting the crew know, but ultimately Chakotay convinces her to share the information with the senior officers. And after being convinced, she ultimately does. This makes sense to me. It is against orders, true, but the directive didn't account for a ship being alone in the Delta Quadrant. So breaking that part of the directive? is practical and logical. After debriefing the crew, the ship makes for the accident site. When they arrive, warp is not available due to the explosion, which again would make sense. Janeway leads an away team down to the site herself. 
Many have complained that the captain goes down to the site, but this is consistent with the directive in my opinion. I don't really have an issue with it. The Omega Directive is technically her order alone, so her being involved makes sense. After assisting the survivors, they would then make their way towards the Molecule in an effort to destroy them. It would be at this point that Tuvok points out that Janeway and himself are violating the Prime Directive, which Janeway rescinds. I don't have a problem with Janeway rescinding the order, but I do have a problem with one of two things when it comes to Tuvok. We know Janeway had a briefing on the Omega Molecule, and presumably she would have mentioned the Omega Directive. This was, of course, with Tuvok being present. If she did talk about the Directive, then Tuvok would know that the Prime Directive need not apply here. So why was he saying it? Just to say it? Why would she remind him that it was rescinded? That's redundant. If she didn't give them the information on the Omega Directive specifically, and its override of the Prime Directive, then the fact that Tuvok instantly backs down is a dereliction of duty. She is giving him an illegal order without proper cause. Now, this could be a nitpick, I'll admit that, but it's just something that bugs me. And if I'm going to be honest, it bugs me so much that I'm going to take a break. So guys, I'm going to be right back. Welcome back, guys. So, let's just get into it. For the rest of the episode, we find the Voyager crew trying to destroy the Molecule and fighting the species who are wanting to use the technology. The last part is where I suppose I become somewhat... torn. Let's think about this. This society is dying. They need the Molecule in order to survive. No one on Voyager seems to care about that. Like at all. The crew are quite possibly dooming an entire civilization, and there's not a whole lot of effort or thought or concern on the consequences of these actions. Hell, I would at least expect some regret. Sometimes you have to do something that will harm others, but at least you have a soul about it. They also don't communicate with the species about their actions. When Voyager has enemy ships about to fire on them for stealing the Molecule and the tech, Chakotay makes no attempt to explain the situation. He doesn't explain why the Molecules have to be destroyed. And giving them no information? Well, all that does is just piss them off. And you know, think about this. By not explaining it, they only delay what could be a catastrophic event. Not stop it. There is no guarantee that this species won't just start using the Molecule again, and this time make it so Voyager aren't able to stop them. I guess in all of this I'm just surprised at the callousness the crew has towards the species. I mean, this civilization is an afterthought in almost every way. That said, I do believe that the Omega Directive and Janeway's handling of it is appropriate. Now whether it should work like this or how it should be handled, that's going to be in other videos. But those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Videos like this are brought to you by fans like you. This is the YouTube Cut. If you'd like a chance to see videos with more clips that aren't restricted by YouTube, consider becoming a patron for as low as $1 a month. You can also get other perks such as seeing the video early and even more. Check out my patron at patreon.com forward slash lore reloaded. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, and guys, I'm going to see you on the next Lore Reloaded.